This is the plaintiff, Tia Scott. She says she rented a basement apartment from the defendant who ended up kicking her out because her daughter wanted to move back home. The uncaring woman put her stuff out on the street during a snowy, muddy day. Her things were ruined, and she's here seeking justice in the amount of the $4,000 she's owed. This is the defendant, Katrina Fougere. She says the plaintiff owes her money for rent. She infested her house with roaches. And when she didn't vacate on the day the eviction judge ordered to leave by, she legally put her stuff out on the street. She took her belongings in a moving truck, which she documented, and if anyone's owed money here today, it's certainly not the plaintiff. She's accused of locking out a woman. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $1,425 for unpaid rent and exterminator costs. All parties, please raise your right hand. You see it? Come to order, please. Let against have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're Tia Scott, in. you yes. are suing Katrina Fougere for $4,000, the return of your security deposit, plus lost work, plus a number of things that you say you, um, she destroyed by putting out. You have a counterclaim against her for $1,425 for rent and other expenses that you think should be on her. Let me talk to you first. Tell me what happened here. Um, I met the defendant back in March of 2017. She had an add-on Craigslist for a uh, three-bedroom apartment for 1400 I called, I met with her. She agreed, I paid her two months rent, uh, you know, in the beginning of month security. Okay. Did that, moved in by April 1st. We was good for a couple of months. February 14th came, she, she texted me a message saying that where her daughter was living, she couldn't live there anymore. The 500 I, I owed her for the rest of February's rent, okay, I don't have wait, to wait, pay. Okay, wait, you skipped something. So you hadn't paid February rent in full yet? I paid, no, I didn't, I didn't pay all of it. How much did you, had you paid? I paid 900. Okay. So she's telling me like in this text, like don't, I don't have to pay the 1500. We're gonna continue like with the eviction process and wait, I was why ev wait, what eviction process? You skipped she that wanted me too. To, she wanted, in, in, in that same mess, text message, she, wanted, okay, she was telling me that Okay, show me the she, text. Did you start an eviction against her? Yes, I did. When did you start it? Uh, that was on um, March 14th. Okay, on February 14th, you send her a text saying, unfortunately, there was a situation in, in the household where my daughter was staying. She needs help. I'm sorry to say this is unexpected. I'm not trying to be a blank. So that 500... You're back, forget it. I guess that's what she was saying, that you were saying, look. I was saying if she leaves, that I would let her have the 500. I made a court date. All right, in March, do you pay rent? Is March the month that you no, paid the 900? No, I don't pay rent. She kept my security deposit. That's why. I, I kept it so for April, you, yes. Hold on one second. So according Sorry. to you, you pay 900 in February. Yes. And yeah. so you still owe rent. Do you pay any more in February? No, because she told me not to. She said to, to she keep She said the... not to if you left at the end of when? She told me not to pay, and we had to court, go to court um, March 7th. Okay. So I, like, she's like, oh, don't pay her for February. Don't finish you know, paying her. Because we're we going to court. Yeah. Okay. And then what happened? We went to court on Fe March the 7th. And what happened in court? They told me, oh, at least, you know, be out by April 1st. I wasn't out by April 1st. April 2nd. Why weren't you out by April 1st if the judge told you to get out by April 1st? Was there a signed settlement? Yeah. That was the agreement that she made, that she would leave on April 1st, and that she wouldn't owe me any money. Yes. So what did you do on April 1st? Um, April 2nd, April I, 2nd did, I, mean. I did take her stuff and take it and put it out on the yeah, street. Yeah, but you still can't do that. You've got to, you've got to I, apply. I, I know that. Okay. You're supposed to yes, apply I did. I did to the that court illegally. for yes, the I issuance did. of a warrant of, uh, of... Of eviction, yes. Right. But what happened? Why didn't you? Um, I just didn't want to get screwed over again, which I have been before, and I wasn't taking it again. And The plaintiff didn't leave on that date, so I illegally took her stuff and put it on the street. Yes, I did. I thought it was a typo, but that's <laughs> no. not. That's exactly what you say you did. Yes, yes, I did. When the cops came, I told them they could arrest me, but there was no way in hell I was going to let her back in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and they cited you? Uh, they did. They gave me a summons, which for I what? have to go for. Um, I don't know. They never arrested me. They said no, they no. Were... But what did the summons say? It just said that I have to show up into court, and I guess I'm having uh, a fine or something. That's what I'm guessing at. Did your daughter really? Is this your daughter? Yes. Did she really have to move in, or you just wanted to get rid no, of her? No, she moved in. She's okay. in. Is she this hard on you? <laughs> 
What, what happened to the fact that you had to move? What happened to that? You I, had a judge tell you you have until the first. What exactly had you done to try to move? I was getting. A, I was going to get a storage to put all my stuff in storage because I haven't found a place yet. Okay. Well, why weren't you doing that the day before? Why couldn't you that abide by the court order? I know I had because I know I had time. Because you know the system. Yeah. Hmm. So, who helped you to take all her stuff out? My daughter, her boyfriend, and myself. We did. Okay. It. And stand up, please. Where did you guys put the stuff? Outside on the curb, on top of a tarp. Okay, well, that was nice. All right, so you got there. How did you figure out this was happening? You got there and you saw I, it? I got there and I realized I was going home to get ready for work. And I realized, like, all my stuff was sitting outside. So I'm going, my kids always go to the house, go in the house first. The door was locked. So I'm like, oh, this is really my stuff. And, like, she, the door is locked, so I'm locked out. I didn't contact her. I, I just straight called the cops and I made a complaint. Okay. And then what did you do with your stuff that day? I put it in the, the lady I work for. Her son, like, got, got his, uh, um, a, like, a storage unit. And he let me put my stuff in there. How'd you to, get it there? He bought it. He bought it in his truck. He, he got his truck over yeah, and he I took your stuff. Yeah. All right. And you're suing for living room furniture, bed, mattress, kitchen appliances, Xbox. What happened to that stuff? I wasn't allowed to keep my stuff in my, my client's son's storage. So what'd you do with it? I had to put it in, in outside. In my, in my cousin's yard. But at some point, your stuff's your responsibility, you see? But when a judge lets you stay rent-free and says, all I need from you is one thing, keep your word and get out by April 1st, that's already one day more than you're supposed to get anyway. Fine, that's the only thing you had to do. And then come the <laughs> next day, you figured, ah, it's going to take her a while to get me out of here with marshals. It'll take another 20 days, 10 days, or whatever. And then it turns out that uh, apparently uh, you were messing with Charlton Heston over here. <laughs> and uh, she helped herself, and she's happy to pay the fine. She doesn't care. She just wasn't going to let another tenant Screw me do off. this to her, <laughs> um, I guess. So you're suing for loss of work. Tell me about that. I missed two days of work because of that. How, how so? It doesn't seem like you're very busy trying to get a storage unit, and it's your boss's I, I son who's to, helping you. I went to post and went to work that night. What and the next What day, work do you do? I'm a home health aide. Okay. Do you have any proof of loss of work? Do you have any, any affidavits or anything from the people you work for? Is it an agency that put it's you there? It's an agency. Right. So do you have anything from the agency saying that you didn't work those two days? No. I didn't know I needed that. Well, what do you think is going to happen when you go to court? I mean, come on. You have to know that the judge is going to say, prove what you're saying. Yeah. You come in here asking for four grand, you got no proof of anything? I mean, the one thing you have proof of is that she illegally <laughs> put your stuff out. I got yeah. you. You know, because that's wrong and she shouldn't do it. And I, 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 <laughs> I, I don't mean to laugh, but it is kind of funny that someone finally went postal and said, that's it. That's the end of it. I'm just, you know... I don't care. I'll take my lumps. I don't even know what her lumps are going to be. I have no idea what's going to no happen. Idea what Is it a be. misdemeanor? I think it's a misdemeanor in New York. I really state. don't even know yet. It's a misdemeanor in New York. Yeah, I think it might be a two hundred dollar fine. I think that's a crime. You got a criminal record now. <laughs> yes. You got a rap sheet. Yeah. You're happy. I'm okay with it. Oh. At fifty, at fifty, at fifty eight years old, I got a rap sheet for throwing somebody's stuff in the street. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. Can a landlord ever lock a tenant out in the middle of a lease? No, I don't believe so. What if the tenant gets just bat blank crazy? No, only if he's endangering somebody else. What do you say? I say there are times there would be exceptions, but I think there has to be a hearing of some kind and it has to be an emergency order. Okay, fair enough, going inside the courtroom. Here's what I want to ask you. What were you thinking bringing her to court? Because now you bring her to court and now she has this counterclaim against you where she wants all that money that you didn't pay. You got this deal to get out and not pay anything if you got out. You looked me right in the eye and said, yeah, I didn't get around to it. Oh, so this doesn't apply anymore. There's no more, I don't have to pay that. She said I didn't. So you're not entitled no. to the deal. She's entitled to rent. You understand that, right? No. <laughs> you really don't, but do, you get the logic of it though. Yeah. Yeah. But... So now, because you didn't leave, there's the $500. Why would she ever have to pay for the exterminator? Um, well, because she wouldn't let me in so I can exterminate the right way and so have the what? person exterminate. So, you know, she let it get that bad, so 
Excuse me. Let her pay for half. No, that's not. All right, it doesn't go down. She doesn't have to pay the exterminator. I'm just bringing you What's this about the microwave? She stole my microwave. How do you know she stole your microwave? Well, because I left the apartment and had a microwave, and now the microwave's gone. It wasn't in the garbage, wasn't ever out in the garbage, wasn't ever anywhere. She just had a different... How am I the microwave if I don't even know my... I didn't even know my stuff was being put out. And I had a microwave there. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. No. The microwave was gone. She knows what she illegally put out. <laughs> everything. She put out. She Sorry. put out everything. There was never no microwave in that house. There wasn't even. Excuse me, there wasn't even. Do you even have a, any um, pictures of a microwave or a receipt for a no, microwave? No, I don't. No, no. It was in the apartment. It was a full apartment. There wasn't even okay. a stove, a we're correct done. stove, when we're I moved done. in that no, house. A, I waited two weeks we're on done. that. We're good, Thank you. ladies. We're done. Okay. The whole idea behind giving you a deal is not getting marshals involved, not having to go back to court, not taking up the judge's time again, not taking up her time again. When you don't abide by it, that's it. Everything's out the window and we start from scratch. You owe February rent $500. You don't get your security deposit back because it covered March rent. You don't get the other things you're asking for because we've already been over it. You don't have the proof of them. Okay. But you certainly don't get your cost of stuff that you have no evidence of got damaged. So for you to tell me, ah, trust me, it all got ruined. And give me four thousand dollars. I mean, come on, you couldn't. Well, have I have thought... the I have the picture of where have my stuff was was set outside, and it wasn't on that no. That doesn't tarp. matter if you took it. You took it. And no, there is no damage you can show me that happened because of the wrongful eviction. She's gonna pay for her wrongful eviction because she probably is gonna have a misdemeanor now. But <laughs> I have to, in order for her to have to pay you money, I have to see that something got damaged because of her wrongful. In other words, it has to be a proximate cause from her action. It can't just you be saying, ah, trust me, judge, a bunch of stuff got damaged. So on your lawsuit against her, my verdict is for the defendant. And on the defendant's lawsuit against you, my verdict is for her in the amount of $500. Good luck, folks. Well, things didn't work out for the plaintiff. Ms. Scott, instead of prevailing and getting $4,000, yeah. you end up having to pay $400 or $500, <laughs> yeah. you know? So that's not good. Yeah. You had no evidence. You understand that. Yeah. You needed evidence. To prove well, the I judge. had, you know, what I had, I and paperwork. then everything, everything else was ruined. Well, I'm sorry for everything you. Everything else put out. That's what's what happens when you come to court. If you don't have proof, you lose. Yeah. And you lost. Sorry about that. That's you living okay now? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, thank you I'm very good. much. All right. Now here comes Charlton Heston. <laughs> You're a tough lady. Yes, I am. You know, I don't want to mess with you. Yes, my mother, you know, had six children and told us to be tough. And all right. Yeah. Do you evict people like that often? No, this is the first time I've done that. And did you feel guilty putting your no, stuff on the street? No, absolutely not. You didn't? Did you? No. You didn't? Okay. Well, you are a tough lady. All right. No. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Okay. Harvey? Okay, Doug, here's how crazy severe this is, that in some states, landlords actually can go to jail if they illegally lock a tenant out. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.